Bonjour, bonsoir. Welcome back to my channel, mes amis. This is a Violet Storm with another installment of Vanity and Prince's obsession with her. I just want to say that I love Vanity. I'm not judging her. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I know about her through the interviews and the various um, performances and things that I've heard about her through people that worked in the industry around the time that she was there back in the 90s and yeah so I know a little I have a little tea on her um I haven't spilled all my tea yet but maybe I will <laughs> but I will say that um I'm not judging her and it's the whole connection with Vanity and Prince you know I always wondered what it would have been like if they would have been married would they you know would they've had a huge family or where would they have lived um, cause I, I think if they would have gotten together and married, they probably still be together. I think that even though Prince at the time wasn't ready to be with her, cause he was very kind of wild. He was wild though. She even said that he was wild cause he, he didn't really want to settle down, but I just felt like he, but he was still obsessed with her, her beauty. I mean, he really loved what she looked like and, and her whole personality um, she really, really admired her. And uh, even when he left her or she left him, um, they still kept in touch with each other through, throughout the 90s before she got really sick. Um, because it was like a little excerpt on Kathy Lee, Regis and Kathy Lee, where she brought a piece of art that she had created for Prince and said, I made this for Prince. And this is like in the 90s, the early 90s. And she had made something for him. And so I'm thinking, well, if you made something for him, that means you're still in touch with him. You're still talking to him, you know, like you still have a relationship with him. So I felt like, well, they still they're still interacting with each other <laughs> well into the 90s. So I'm not judging that. I just feel like when Vanity started to do drugs, I think she started to do it because it was more of a curiosity, and also it was introduced to her by a friend, which was Morris Day. They used to perform together. And <clears throat> I always said that being an entertainer is probably one of the hardest things you could ever do. You know, that's one of the top five things that was very difficult. Um, because once, once you become a brand and the brand becomes popular, you're going to be extremely busy. You're going to be doing concerts, interviews live performances it's in recording in the studio and you don't have a lot of time for yourself you know you don't have a lot of downtime when you're successful in the business you're just you're trying to get as many things done as possible because you know the stars stars fade so you want to get as much life out of your brand as possible before it, it starts to fade so you you're going to work your butt off because you remember how prince used to work Prince would do like a two and a half hour concert and then he would leave and go to a nightclub and perform until like five in the morning. So to me, that dude, <laughs> he never slept. Prince maybe had a couple hours here, a couple hours there. He catnapped. He never really laid down for eight hours. He even said that. He's like, he never really sleeps because he always thinks about music. And if he has an idea and it comes to him, in the middle of the night, he's going to get up and start recording. And that could take hours, you know, of him sitting in the studio recording a song or trying to come up with the, the riff or come up with some notes because you know, whatever instrument he's playing, I mean, he's he was up all the time. So, okay, did Prince do drugs? Probably, maybe. I think he kind of did a couple of things here and there. But we'll get into that later. But as far as Vanity doing drugs, I'm not judging her. I just feel like... She was at a point where she needed some energy. Coffee wasn't doing it. <laughs> and Morris Day introduced her to, um, I'm not going to say the word because I think there's an algorithm here on YouTube, but we know what it is. She was smoking rock. She was smoking rock. I guess we could say rock. She was smoking rock. And once she tried that, she realized how it gave her a high. It gave her that buzz and it suppressed her appetite. So she, cause she, you know, when you're a 
a woman, especially if you're a woman in the eye of the public, you want to stay slim and you want to have a nice figure and you don't want to go overweight because you're always getting pictures taken of you. So she wants to keep, suppress her um, her eating. What is it? Suppress? Well, actually, she yeah, she wanted to, to keep her weight down. She was never fat. I, I've never seen her fat, but I think she was kind of really concerned about what she looked like. Her name was Vanity, you know. So she wanted to look good all the time. So she said, oh, this is something that could help her with her um, diet, you know, keep her weight down. And it can give her, it gave her this a ton of energy, which is what she needed because she was doing a lot of TV shows and live performances. And and she was acting and she was also um, recording at the same time. <clears throat> so she was very busy and she was modeling. So she was very busy. So that cocaine, I mean, that, oop, sorry, uh, The Rock helped her <laughs> give her energy and I'm not judging her because I feel like if you're under pressure and you trying to and you have to be somewhere and you have to perform and you're tired because you didn't get any sleep the day before I mean it's, it's either you're going to do something to wake up either you're going to drink a ton of coffee you know which you really can't do because you can't keep going to the bathroom when you're on set or you're going to do something that keeps you awake if it's over the counter or not, it's it's available in in L. A. Um, Hollywood has a lot of drugs. Everybody knows that, and I'm not judging them. I just feel like they're under a lot of pressure, and that takes off the pressure. Unfortunately, it's addictive, and that's what ends up killing people because it's over access of it. So I'm not judging her. I'm just feeling like that's probably why she did it. That's what I heard that you know Morris they introduced her to it because she needed something. She needed to to she needed energy. She needed to perform and she wasn't feeling it and he could see that she was like very tired or whatever he was like just take a hit of this it'll keep you up it'll give you a little energy and she went ahead and did it and she ended up liking it the effect that it had on her and it was cheap and it's available and that was during the crack epidemic which I said crack oh my gosh well anyway um (laughs) he was doing I'm not I'm not glamorizing it I'm just saying what had happened that it was available to them during that time. That's the 80s. So I'm not judging Vanity, but I just feel that she was kind of caught up in the whole being famous, being a celebrity thing that happens to all of them at some juncture in their life. And the whole um, trying to keep up the pace of doing all the interviews and the live performances and the recordings and the acting and the modeling And being a spokesperson, it's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. And if you really want to make money and live well, you you have to maintain it. And that's the only way you can maintain it is by working. Working hard, actually. It's one of the hardest things you can do. Um, But when I discovered Vanity um, on the Internet, I was like, who is this woman? Hmm. (laughs) Um, Because I didn't grow up in the 80s. I grew up in the late mid 90s and so I didn't really know who she was until much later but when I did discover who she was because I saw a picture of her on the internet and I was like she looks kind of like Holly Berry or Holly Berry looks like her in a way there's something similar there and then also there was a um an actress um named Jane Kennedy who came way before their time um she looks like Vanity she reminds me of Vanity they have a similarity. And I was like, wow, what is, you know, who is this vanity young lady? <laughs> and I just started to research her and get information about her. And I just fell in love. It was just like, she's everything that I would say was like a, a to me, she seemed like Marilyn Monroe in a lot of ways to me. I feel like, wow, she's kind of like a Marilyn Monroe-ish kind of sexy bombshell type woman. And I liked her aesthetic because it was like she created her own costumes and her own, you know, she came up with her own look. Um, and, she, you know, she's from the 80s, so she had that 80s look, <laughs> the big hair at one Well, actually, when she started out with Prince, she had smooth hair. But then as she progressed into the 80s, I guess, she had this big bouffant hair. But she was very 80s looking. And... Um, I think what happened with her as far as the drugs things goes, she got caught up in it with, okay, this is what I heard from a very good source. They said Morris Day and her were going to be performing that night. She 
had been, you know, rehearsing and all that stuff all day. And she was really, really tired. And they had to go on um, in a few hours. And she was like laying there trying to, you know, with her eyes closed, I guess. She was really, really tired. And she's like, oh, my God, I don't know if I can go on. I'm so tired, you know. And he was like, well, I have something that will perk you up or wake you up. And she was like, what is it? He was like, well, here, just take a little hit of this, which was rock. Because I guess we can't say the real word of it because there's an algorithm on YouTube. So there's like 15,000 words you're not supposed to say or you get flagged or demonetized or whatever. So anyway, um, so she was he gave her some rock in a pipe and told her to smoke it. Okay, so she took a hit and from what I understand, it immediately perked her up. She like, wow, what is this? You know, this is really, you know, this got a, some some this has some um kick to it <laughs> or whatever she said. And I think she liked that it gave her an immediate high and then it gave her a, a lot of energy. She had like a ton of energy. And um he was like, you know, she was like, where did you get it? And he had a dealer at the time. So he, he was able to get this, you know, the rock for her. But she performed great that night. She had a ton of energy. She gave a very energetic performance. Because usually, from all the videos I've seen of her, she always had this, like, she had a lot of energy. She was very energetic. I remember that. I was like, why? How? So she's got a ton of energy. She has a lot of energy. In her videos, you just see how... How she can like run around the stage and you know f- f- and doesn't she didn't seem tired and so like she had seemed to have all this energy and it was because she was smoking rock and um, and I, I thought she probably did a, I mean she did it one to get high but also to have that energy and also it curbed her appetite it kept her slim you know it kept her really thin and she didn't have to worry about dieting as much you know and it really helped her keep her weight down because I think you know when you're a woman especially a woman in in Hollywood you're so conscious of your body and people always want to pick out any little thing about you like oh my god you're gaining weight oh you don't look that good in the picture and you know and she was a model at the time too people keep forgetting that Vanity was still modeling during this time she was still doing I've seen I saw tons of ads of her doing like different um, brands and stuff. She was in a lot of different things people just didn't know about. But when I did my research, I started finding all these different ads that she did during the time that she was acting and singing. She was modeling as well. So she had to keep her weight down to to get the uh, modeling gigs. You know, you have to look a certain way. And then, of course, hence the name Vanity, she had to be beautiful all the time. So there's that pressure. So she had to keep her weight down, and um, I'm drinking a Red Bull. I'm keeping my energy up with a Red Bull. <clears throat> Can we say Red Bull? I'm not being sponsored, but I do drink Red Bull. Uh, so anyhow, I just feel like Vanity got into the drugs kind of on an innocent in, in an innocent way. It's not like she was out there looking for it. It it came to her, you know. It was like, oh, okay, Morris Day was doing it. And um, introduced it to her. And it was all innocent. Like, you know, you're tired. You want to, you know, you know, you have to give up a performance. And it's a lot of important people watching. You you don't want to get out there and just be like, you know, dull. So she needed something, I guess. And that was a, the quickest answer for her. Because um, it's not like you can sit there and drink a pot of coffee and then try to go on stage and then you have to go to the bathroom. It's like now... <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to end up having to use the bathroom and you're on stage like, oh, my gosh, I got to go to the bathroom. Um, Yeah. So that's one of the things that people used to do like drugs to kind of curb, you know, because you can't do over the counter stuff all the time because it doesn't really work. Um, I just feel like she did it because it was available. It was quick. It was easy. It's cheap. It was everywhere. This is during the crack epidemic in the 80s. So they had to go through that whole crack thing. Um. And she became a victim of it eventually. Because I think in the beginning, she was able to control it. It wasn't like she was smoking every day in the beginning. It was just like any other thing. She just did it when she thought she needed it. 
you know, when she thought, because even in some of her interviews, you can see when she's not high. Um, you could tell when she's not high and because she's more logical. She's more clear eyed. You can see that she's not going all over the place. Um, but then when she was high, you can tell when she was high. You know, she was like really bubbly and, you know, it, you know, she was talking a mile, a hundred miles a minute. And then she was all the, she was rambling through, like I'm doing now, I guess, but she was rambling through her, um, sentences and she didn't make sense. But anyway, I digress. But, um, she was a person that I believe she just really, truly, um, just needed energy. She just needed something to keep her up. You know, I, I don't think that it was something that she craved because she didn't do drugs before she got into the whole Minneapolis thing. She didn't do it be prior to that because she even talked about how she didn't start doing drugs until she met Moore's day and, you know, she needed to stay up and he gave her some rock and the rock kept her up. <laughs> but then it started out innocently and then she started to become more of a a hardcore drug addict later in the, um, like, I would say late 80s, early 90s. That's when she was doing it daily. And I think that's how it does. That's how drugs are. You just start depending on it. And she had a pre predisposition to it because her mom was a drug addict and her father was a drug addict. So she inherited that addiction. And uh, that's why I really think that's why she became a hardcore addict because of that. Had she probably not had that pre disposition, she probably would have not been so into it, you know. Because some people do drugs and they do it recreationally and they can control it. They only do it once whenever they really feel like doing it and they can stop at any time and they do stop. Those are people who um, I would call recreational drug users. They only do it on the weekend or, you know. So there's some people that are like that, that can control it. And there's people who are out of control, who can't stop. And she was one of those people who couldn't really stop. But I really feel like she got a bad batch of drugs. I feel like she knows who the drug dealer is who gave it to her. Because back in the day, when I researched, it said that they were using other uh, products to extend the crack. So it can sell more of it. So they would cut it with other stuff. And give you just, you know, a portion of the crack and then the other part would be like, say, baking soda or something like that, baking powder. But I mean, they were using even stronger stuff than that. That was that was poisonous. And I think she got that a batch of really bad crack because there was a lot of stuff on the streets that were was just crap. They were selling fake drugs, you know, and they were, you know, trying to make money off of that. And that happens, too. And I think that's what really shut down her kidneys because... The research that I did, you have to smoke a lot of crack for your kidneys to shut down like that. Like you would have to be smoking pounds of it back to back. Cause I can't see, cause they even they even doctors were saying, yeah, I mean she had to be smoking a lot of it for her kidneys to both kidneys to shut down. Yeah. So I, and then to go blind and lo- lose your hearing, that's poison. That's some sort of a poison that she was smoking. Somebody gave her a bad batch. That's what I'm thinking happened. But she doesn't really say who did because I think she she was kind of beyond that at that point. She didn't want to start naming names in her book. She doesn't really name names. She just kind of alludes to, you know, she uses metaphors in her book. You have to read between the lines, but she doesn't really say who it is and what it is. She always says it It was her. She made that choice. She She's the one that made the choice to, to buy it, and she made the choice to smoke it. Um... And I mean, that's unfortunate, but she let let that happen to her. But I think she doesn't blame anybody but herself at the end of the day. Because she was like, well, you know, she says that she made the choice to do the drugs. Nobody forced her to do it. And she did it on her own. And I respect that because at least she's woman enough to admit it. She doesn't, she's just not pointing fingers. Because ultimately it was her choice. And ultimately she did make, do it her on her own. And she could have said no, you know, had she been, you know, if she didn't, if she was, I wouldn't say stronger, but if she didn't have a predisposition to it, she probably would have been stronger or more able to say no. But I don't blame her. I don't judge her. It's a lot of pressure to be a star. People don't, people don't realize. I think some, some people don't realize how hard it is to say 
You're supposed to be beautiful all the time, fashionable all the time, witty, charming, attractive all the time. And probably it was easier in the beginning because, you know, you're young and your body takes well to exercise and you don't have to do much to stay fit but then as you get older your metabolism changes you gain more weight it's a little harder to keep it off you know it's just little things like that that start to happen and you have to work harder to get to where you know from point a to point b you have to work a little harder to get there um and i think that happens to a lot of those stars and that's why you always hear these tragic endings because they're trying to hold on to it and they do they're desperate to keep that fame and they'll do anything to keep it you know the drugs are usually one of the culprits and uh, unfortunately that's what gets them into trouble but it's almost it's right there in their face because I remember going to an industry party in the 90s in the uh, let's see not I mean sorry 2000s in the 2000s and um, in the industry party there were recreational as they call recreational um party favors there and they were free and they were sitting right there and I was like I used to read stories about it like you know and and I I was like wow they used to have these like drug parties or they would have these powder parties and it's true it's uh, it's really actually true so I could see how she would have easily um been offered a lot of stuff right off the bat you know, and probably got a lot of stuff for free. She probably got a lot of it for free. Um, so I can see why, she, you know, a lot of people become drug addicts because it's right there. Um, so, yeah. So I don't judge her. I just feel like she was just another victim of the game. You know, you get, get into the game and you become extremely popular because she became wildly popular like Vanity from what I can tell from all the um, articles and the sales of her albums and the popularity of her movies, she was extremely popular. I'm like, wow, she she was really up there. She was really up there, considering that people said she didn't have any talent. People used to say, oh, she can't act. She can't sing. She can't be a model. And she did all of that. She conquered it all. I mean, she was like a triple threat believe it or not, because she was like in a movie of Last Dragon and she had was on the soundtrack and she had an album out. So it was like she's doing the darn thing. Like you cannot deny that she was up there with the best of them. And she was really in her own category because there was no other woman like her that, that could really stand next to her and be as beautiful, natural beauty like her. There was no one like her at the time um, other than I would say Jennifer Beals. But I think Jennifer is a little older than her. But Jennifer is a, was an actor. She wasn't a singer or performer, but she's the only other woman I can think of that was would be as beautiful, you know, as Vanity was. But um, other than her, I mean, who else was there <laughs> that could really match her beauty? Like, and, and is a singer and a performer and an actor, and could say that they had, they had an album and a movie out at the same time, and they were on the soundtrack. I mean, come on. Who could say that? Very few people can say it. So I was very intrigued by that. I said, even though people used to talk down on her, oh, she's only just in the game because she's pretty and she knew Prince. That's part of it. Duh. You know, like that is part of it. Duh. Um, that definitely did help that she's gorgeous. Definitely. And that was fine because that's what she was known for. And that was what that was her trademark you know beauty was her trademark and she wanted to be a sex symbol she wanted to be like Marilyn Monroe and Sophia Loren and she wanted to be like that you know or even though she said her (laughs) one of her influences was Morticia but I understood why she said because Morticia was very sexy but she wanted to be a sex symbol so that's why being beautiful was fine with her she didn't mind that that was perfectly what she wanted to be um and I think as she went along as she moved on into her career she got even more beautiful believe it or not I just think that the the clothing got better the makeup got better because she really didn't need makeup but of course when you're in Hollywood and you have to represent you have to wear makeup so 
they eventually got her makeup right because I know it'd be in the beginning it was such a, it, it was so heavy it's like this heavy makeup and it made her look crazy um some of the pictures that I saw of her I'm like why did they make her look like this extremely hookery hookerish <laughs> you know like that ton of blush I'm like oh my gosh that's too much blush but then they toned it down and let her natural beauty come through and then that's when you really saw wow whoa who is this goddess she became like a goddess once they got it right <clears throat> with the hair and makeup Cause to tell you the truth, when I when I saw Last Dragon, when I um got the DVD, I bought the DVD and I saw the Last Dragon. I said, "What did they do to her hair? <laughs> they messed her hair up." But that was '80s hair. I'm like, "Wow, they poofed up her hair." And did I was like, "Okay, but that's '80s hair." But still, they could have made it look better than that. But um, I don't know. I I think they didn't quite know what to do with her. <laughs> Because she had straight, silky hair. She has, you know, her hair was straight and silky. So how do you make a woman with straight, sil silky hair look like she has an afro? You got to poof it up and spray a lot of hairspray and poof it up and tease it to the, to the gods. And uh, that's what they did to her to try to make her look like she has afro hair, which she didn't. But okay. Because <laughs> they were trying to make her look as African-American as possible because it's an African-American movie. I, I totally get it. I, I I just like, well, but that didn't look really good. It didn't look good to me. I was like, oh, my gosh. They, they, I, I think they could have done better, but it is what it is. Because there was certain parts in the movie where her hair did look good, like at the very end. Her hair looked way better. They figured it out, like, at the end of the movie, how to do her hair and, um, like, stuff like that. And the makeup was better. Um <laughs> I think Barry Gordy was like, come on, guys, let's try different things. And, you know, because, you know, also, you know, what I heard is that they had her tan. They had her go out and um, tan to make her darker because she's much darker in The Last Dragon than she is actually ever in her everyday life. Um, she was much lighter than that. But I remember her her and Ty Mock had to tan to be darker to be in the movie because they wanted to make it sure that people knew they're African-American, which is fine. I totally get it. But I, I just thought that was kind of interesting when I read about that. Um, what else about vanity and the drug thing that took her out? Um, I, do, I do feel like they try to intervene. I think she had friends that try to get her to... Um, Stop her drug use, like her her sister um, Patty, and then some of her friends in the industry, like Arsenio Hall. There was people that were trying to get her out of it. You know, they saw her, that she was going spiraling out of control, and they were trying to reel her back in. And she did go to rehab because she said she did rehab a couple of times. You know, and eventually she kicked the habit after her kidneys failed. Um, that's when she really said, "Okay, this is it." And um, she stopped doing the drugs. <clears throat> now, as far as Prince goes and him being obsessed with her, I felt like Prince really wanted to be her. Because, funny enough, I remember I always felt Prince was bisexual. I don't know why I f felt so strongly about that at the very beginning of knowing who he is and, you know, researching him, watching all of his videos and stuff. To me, he seemed like a bisexual man or a cross-dresser a transvestite maybe um maybe even a transgender person maybe because I, I think back in their day they didn't have that um those terms weren't really used as much as they are today and people don't I didn't identify it as quickly to those terms like they're doing it now now it's a common thing when people say transgender oh, okay you know, it's more like acceptable. People understand it. But I think he was transgender because I remember him talking in an interview with Oprah. And he said that he had a um, a woman inside of him. He said there's, there's another personality inside of him. And he called her Camille. He was a female and they called her Camille. So I'm like, wow, he, told, he said that on TV. <laughs> He, he basically said he's transgendered in so many words on TV. That's why I'm like, I knew something was there because he all, he dresses like a woman. He sings in a falsetto like 80% of the time. He's singing in a, a falsetto type voice like a woman. And even some of the way he would sing certain songs, 
it was like he was taking the woman's point of view because I'm like, that's not what a man would say. He'd say stuff that women would say to a man, not a man to a woman. So I always felt like he was switching roles and genders when he would do that. It was kind of confusing to a lot of people. Like, is he just doing that just to be, you know, controversial, you know, um, to be relevant or whatever the case may be? But I think he really w- was that person. I don't think he was faking that. I think that he really believed he had a female personality inside of him and he even named her I don't think he would just make that up just for clout I think he just he really was that (laughs) that individual you know Um, Camille he called her Camille and I think that's what he was talking about when he said vanity Um, he sees his reflection in her you know it's like a female version of himself when he looks at her that's when I made that connection I said oh I think that's what he meant yeah Maybe he was transgendered. Maybe he was a transgendered woman in a man's body. I'm thinking maybe that or or bisexual. Hey, because even even um, Vanity had a, an affair with a couple of women. She she was known from. I have some really good sources, and they're not going to lie about it. That they used to see. Because they worked on um, different movie sets and TV sets and stuff. They did production. I know somebody who's in production. I know somebody who's a producer. And they used to see her back in the 90s before she got sick running around with a couple of women that were in the industry. There was one woman who used to be, who played the detective on um, Friday the 13th series, a redhead woman. They used to have, they had a fling. They had an affair. And, um... It was another woman, a model that Vanity used to be very close to, that they, people used to see them at different clubs, you know, like different little clubs. They would see Vanity doing stuff with other women, dancing with them and all that stuff, and hugging and kissing on them in more of not a sisterly way, but like, oh, they must be dating because you don't kiss like that if you're just friends, you know. And she would go out to these um, alternative clubs. And, um, yeah, so she was known around town to have a couple of women girlfriends. But I think we didn't know it. I think people, um, or, or I should say the public of the t- at that time, um, did not know that because she never put it out there until much later she did admit to it. She said she tried, she put it in a kind of a little quick catchphrase. She said, oh, she's tried women. And it didn't work. So she did have, she even admitted she had relationships with women, but it just didn't work out for her because whatever she was looking for, which I think she was really looking for a guy who could be like a, almost like a father figure in a way, somebody that could protect her and somebody that she can go to when things weren't going her way or when she was sad or depressed, she can go to that person. That person could, would help her get through it or, you know, be her rock and, When she was dating men, she was having these bad relationships because she was picking the same kind of guy. Because look at it, Prince, Adamant, Billy Idol, Nikki Six, they were all similar. These are all guys in the music industry that were androgynous, cross-dressing men. You know, they wore makeup, they wore lipstick, they wore heels, they wore, you know, women's clothes, some of them. You know, and you kind of feel like... Even if that's just just for a gimmick, it may have just been a gimmick for some of them, but still she was picking those kind of guys who are just wild, kind of androgynous, break down barriers. They're not ready to settle down. None of them were. They all want to you know, have their freedom. And even when she got a um, little, 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 when she was, I kept my loss of words, even when she got engaged to Nikki Six, I didn't feel like that was going to work out because I was like, when I read the story about the monster, how how would that have worked out? Like to me, in my mind, I'm thinking she's a Capricorn, he's a Sagittarius. They're not gonna get along. There's no way. If you look at astrology, it's like mm, no. <laughs> Capricorns are way too serious, and Capricorns are way too down to earth to really want to be someone in their personal life. Now we understand they had a stage life, but their personal life. She's more down to earth. She wants, you know, to have a family and a house and a car and the white picket fence. They're traditionalists. 
But a Sag, they're wild. Sagges like to have their freedom and they like to explore. They like to run around and, you know, pack up at a moment's notice and go to another country. That's how they are. They're not somebody who wants to settle down and have a family right away. They'll, they'll probably do that like in their 40s and 50s. But when they're in their teens and early 20s, forget about it. You cannot get a Sag to settle down like that, that fast. You know, they love their freedom. Unless you're a, a person just like them, you'd have to be just like a Sagittarius. Come on, let's get up and let's go. You know, you have to be just like that, ready to go, because that's what they're energy people. You know, they're very much high energy people. So you'd have to be ready to do whatever they want to do and, you know, be there to support them. But if you're not, it's going to be a conflict. You're going to have a lot of conflict with them. So to me, I'm like, how does a Sagittarius and a Capricorn get together? Hmm, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that would work. I don't think that's going to work. Somebody's going to have to act like a Sag or the Sag is going to have to act like the Capricorn because otherwise I don't know how this is going to work. They're just two different polar opposites. So I said, no, I don't think that would have worked anyway. And then when she was with Prince, he's a Gemini and she's a Capricorn. I'm like, same kind of situation. Geminis are air signs. They like their time to themselves. They love to be social but then they also love to be alone you know like they, they're like hot and cold people they're like bipolar in a way not in a negative way but like like they they are hot and cold like one minute they you know they're, they're like the life of the party and the next minute you can't find them they're like that they're weird like that and so they need a lot of time to themselves to do whatever they're gonna do you know um they like to do they like to keep busy so if you're somebody that likes to stay home and let's go to bed at eight o'clock and do our eight hours and get up at, you know, seven in the morning, you're probably not going to be with that person for very long <laughs> because Gemini gets up at any time of the night and they're out doing stuff. It's hard to see. It's hard to, it's hard. I'm, I know I'm generalizing, but cause I'm sure there's, oh, there's the, the darn TV just turned on one moment. Okay. So I have everything like on a, a timer. Everything turns on when it wants to turn on. So anyway, I have to change that. These timers. But anyway. Um, but I feel like Geminis are the kind of people that they love to be spontaneous. And when you're spontaneous, you don't quite know what they're going to do. You don't know quite where they're, which way they're going, you know. And that's the thing that I think would probably get on Capricorn's nerves. Because they don't like that. <laughs> Capricorns are not spontaneous. They're like... Let's let's map out a path here and let's write down everything we're going to need to get there and let's write down the dates and times and let's achieve these things one by one. You know, that's how they are. They're very much um, structured. They like structure. They like goals and they like to reach their goals when they put the date on them. They like to get things done in a timely manner. They don't like to be all over the place. So to me, I've, I've always felt like she picked the wrong men each and every time, each and every time. I'm like, and I'm, that could have stemmed back to her, you know, growing up in a broken household where her mom was a drunk. Basically, she was a drinker, and then her father was a drug addict as well, and he was abusive. So it's like she didn't have any real idea of what a man should be, you know. She really didn't know, you know, really how to pick a man. She didn't really know. Because um, she made, I mean, come on. I understand Prince helped her, and I understand Prince was definitely the catalyst for her career. I mean, he really put her on the map, but I don't think they were good together as far as their personalities. They were just too, I would say, too different, even though they were similar in a lot of ways, like both both are ambitious, both are leaders, both are, you know, goal setters, but I think they were different as far as how they went about getting there, you know. And I think that was the conflict that she wanted to do her way and he wanted her to do it his way. And I think that was the biggest conflict that the reason why they weren't together. So they were alike and they were different in so many ways. Um, air sign and an earth sign. Yeah. Somebody would have to give up control. And I don't think she was ready to do that. She had a very specific goal and so did he. So I think that's what made them stay apart so long. I think maybe they were just better off as just friends with benefits because he was just crazy and wild and 
you know, you see his two marriages that he had with Maite, that didn't last very long. Then his marriage to Manuela didn't last very long. It's like he wasn't satisfied because that other entity that's inside him, which was the female entity inside Prince, was not being satisfied. So I think that he was trans. What do you guys think? You let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. I would love to hear from you guys and I will be posting more soon. So hit the bell and the subscription so you can get my updates because you never know when I'm going to post another one. Talk to you later. Ciao.